Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Sorry for the delay. Um, I'm up here talking about Electron apps for Windows. If that's weird because I have a Mac in front of me, I totally agree with you. It's been an adventure, so bear with me through this story. So uh, a little about me. My name is Carmen Long. You can find me on Twitter or my blog. Please check those out. I love it when people read my blog. I also help run Nerdy Girls Code Club. So if you are a lady interested in tech or you know a lady interested in tech, please hit me up. I always love to see new faces. And let's get going. Uh, just real quick, I won't spend too much time on this, but if you don't know what Electron is, it is a framework from GitHub that lets you build, jo they're not JavaScript applications, they're actually like Windows, EXEs, or Macs, DMGs, or Linux, I can't remember what those are, but they're actual like applications that are built with JavaScript. And um, I actually gave a talk on this a couple months ago, and someone asked what about packaging them into apps, and I had read about it, and what I didn't know about were some common pitfalls. Wow, you need that. Um, I thought that was me, sorry. Okay, so um, this is not an extensive list of all of the pitfalls, if this is something you wanna do, this is just the ones that I ran into that I felt were like really truly noteworthy. Um, just so you guys kind of have an idea of what my first few attempts looked like, I brought a picture. Um, it, it, it came with some, some, gosh, I can't even think. It was tricky, I'll just say that. So first of all, let's talk about what we need. There is a module called Electron Packager and that will take your app and put it into whatever format you're looking for, be it Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, if you're gonna do this on Mac, so if you're on a Mac packaging for Windows, you need Wine, otherwise you don't necessarily need it. Electron Winstaller, we'll get into that for auto update, and then auto updater is a module attached to Electron, and you may notice that Patience didn't have a link. I'm still looking for that, so if you guys find it, let me know. Um, hopefully, your app will look like this. Okay, so one of the things I mentioned was file structure. Um, that's, I don't know if you guys can really see that very well, but on the next slide, this might be better. So, I think everyone's kind of used to this idea to where you have your build folder and you have your source folder. This really, for me, solidified the importance of that because I'm not saying this happened to me or anything, but if you have your build folder in the root with your source files and you bundle that all together, you will get a build folder inception. So, and this is a problem for Windows because Windows has a limit to how long your path can be. Uh, 248 characters, I think, is the limit, so if you have 16 or so build folders within build folders within build folders. Again, I'm not saying I did this. Um, it, it causes a problem. So it's something that we always do, but for me, like it was just so like, oh my gosh, that's, that's why we do this. This makes perfect sense now. Um, a couple things that you may notice. There are not two node modules folders, but there actually would be. Um, in the root, there's a package.json folder, and then in the source, there's a second package.json folder. So you would also end up with two node modules folders. Um, we'll get back to that right now. <laughs> um, so why are there two package.json files? When I first started this, I was like, what the heck? I don't understand, which is how I ended up with my build folder in the root, because I was like, that's stupid. Why do I need two package.json files? I should have listened to the blog post. It would have saved me a lot of time. So in packaging your app, you're going to have certain node modules. You're gonna have Electron Winstaller. I have a couple other modules that I use as a part of the build scripts to actually take the source folder and package it up. 
That said, also in the application itself, you've got things like Moment, Angular, or whatever other modules that you're using that need to be a part of that. So for space sakes, because again, this is an application that's going onto somebody's computer, for space sake, you don't want everything in your app. Um, otherwise, you could end up with, you know, I don't even know how many modules do you use. That's how big it would be. So, um, hope that makes sense. Uh, this one's a lot more straightforward. Uh, don't put hyphens in the title of the package.json file. Windows doesn't like it and it breaks. Don't do it. Um, so, now that we've kind of laid out our groundwork, let's get started. So, your main JS file is what actually runs your Electron application. Beyond that, it's just any other JavaScript application that would go on a server for a website. Um, so, let's go over that a little bit. Um, Squirrel is what runs auto update. So, this is actually kind of two pieces. You have packaging the app, but then once you have your app out there, you don't necessarily want to go individually from computer to computer to computer updating it. Squirrel takes that step out. It will auto update for you. So I don't know how much of this you can really see, but basically this goes at the very beginning of your main JS file and it checks for squirrel commands and if there aren't any, pretty much doesn't do anything, and depending on what, I said commands, I'm sorry, events, it checks for squirrel events. And if there are events, it handles them. So part two is auto updater events. Uh, you might remember that Electron had an auto updater module attached to it. And this is what that looks like. This is way simpler for me. I could actually like very much explain what this is doing. The other one was because Squirrel is actually C-sharp, so fun times for me. Um, you've got your update feed. That is where the updater files, so any updates, that is where they're located. And then we just check for updates, and then based on the events, if there are events, it goes and grabs them. If there are not events, it, excuse me, it doesn't. And then, so for update downloaded, I just think this is kind of funny. You'll notice that quit and install is commented out. So the way I have it set up right now, it will literally, much in the style of Windows, stop your application <laughs> and restart it for you as soon as there's an update. I don't know if anybody else thinks that's funny, but I think it's really funny. Um, okay, so we've, laid, we've finished laying our groundwork. So now we're gonna actually package it. This is part one. So first thing, you have to have Electron Packager, and then you have to run it. So this is a really crazy looking script, but it's really not that bad. So you're just passing in params to Electron Packager, you're passing in the path to the source. Um, so it says on that first line, name of new directory, that's whatever you're gonna name your directory where it puts your exe, that's all that is out is the path to where that new directory is going to be. So that would be our build folder that we talked about earlier. And then you designate the platform. Um, since we're on Windows, it can be 64-bit or 32-bit. And then that overwrite flag just says, if there's already one there, get rid of it and make this new one. Um, in case you're a Mac fan like me, it's nearly identical. The only difference is, um, the platform is Darwin and it's always gonna be 64-bit. So that will give you an EXE that will run. So if all you wanna do is leave here and make an Electron app, that's literally all you need to do and you'll have an EXE. So that's really exciting for me. Um, if you want to do auto update, this is where the journey gets really interesting. Um, you take that exe that you just generated. Also, let me let me just pause here to say, it's totally different for Mac. That's like a different talk. <laughs> um, so, back on track. Um, for Windows, you take that exe, sorry, and this is the file that you would run 
to take the exe and generate an installer because you cannot do auto update on Windows without an installer. Um, it's pretty simple. It just, you have your app directory, that's where the exe lives basically. Again, you have an output directory. It's slightly different again because this is the installer itself. So I just put it in, the, in a different folder within build. Um, the author is me and then the name of the exe. And then it either works or it doesn't. This is where you're gonna run into the weird hyphen thing. So be warned. Um, next, uh, set up your file server. Where are your files gonna live? You may have noticed that I just did mine on localhost. You can use S, you can use an S3 bucket, you, however you wanna do it. The important part here is really just it has to be an exposed URL that anybody can hit unless you wanna deal with authentication shenanigans. I just used HTTP server and just have done it all locally so far and it's been good. Um, just so you can kind of see what that craziness looks like, this is all the times that I did updates trying to get this to work. <laughs> so it's been an adventure. Um, step four, this one's pretty easy. You just start the project. So you double click, when you run your installer file, so that's just no file name, it's gonna spit out a couple of files. It'll include, uh, you might be able to see them here. It'll include a releases file. That's what actually is keeping track based on the version number in your project. And it has, are there any Windows people here who know what those actual extensions are? I just call them NuPeg files because that's phonetic but it also has a setup exe and then the installer is that .msi. So you double click your setup.exe and it installs. So double click setup exe to start it. Main.js is gonna check for updates and hopefully your app doesn't just restart when you get updates like mine does, but more power to you. This is another really tricky part, pitfall if you will. Um, the files get downloaded not to where I would think they would go, but they get downloaded to the user's app data folder, which this was a bit of a struggle for me because I don't know Windows, so a lot of this was me just looking around Windows being like, I know these files are here because of the app updated, but where are they? I don't know. So it was a bit of a struggle. The application runs from there, and hopefully it's not a struggle for anybody in here because I just told you. So how do we make this work? I'm not gonna really expect my users to go to user slash app data slash local slash app name, like so on and so on and so on. So not being a Windows user, it took me a while to come to what now seems like a really obvious solution. Just put it in the start menu. But then how do you update the shortcut? Because this is what that folder actually looks like. You'll notice that it has packages in packages. You don't know this because I didn't get a picture of it, but that's where the new peg files are and what happens is those files run and it generates a new version so those two what does that say okay, so you can see that this took me a while um, those are actual applications so it's basically duplicated and so you have to actually go into those folders then to get to the exe so my solution was I wrote a module that would update a shortcut from the start menu. All I really did was look at which of these folders that has, because it's very methodical in the naming process. It's like app name dot version number. So which of these is newest? Update the shortcut. Uh, this is the node module I used. It lets you either create one if there isn't already a shortcut in the start menu or update an existing one. And that is my journey to getting Electron to auto-update. I know we just covered a lot. Are there any questions? 